welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction, haunted entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we come to you at the end of what has been a long weekend for us, basically. Mm-hmm. We planned a trip for this weekend, like, literally years ago. Yeah. Thanks, COVID. Right. Um, and when the day came around, we were not able to go. And there's a lot of reasons for it. We won't get into it. But suffice to say, some lucky bastard got our Rammstein tickets. <laughs> yeah. Um, and basically, yeah, we didn't get to go to San Antonio, visit a few haunts, and see Rammstein. But honestly, I think the weekend was better spent here. Yeah. These past three days, we took off Friday. We're taking off today, Monday. Uh, the main thing is we've been trying to put work into our haunt and work into... All of the uh, the stuff we need to get done, and kind of realizing how much that is. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah, we will. We'll be talking about that in a minute. But please, real fast, if you have not done so already, check us out at all the places we exist. We exist places. You can find us at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly. Great way to access previous episodes. We'll be referencing at least one of those shortly. Easy way to find it's there. You can also find us wherever you get your podcasts from. Apple Podcasts and Google Play are the main two, but wherever seems to be the answer to finding us. I keep finding us on platforms I've never heard of before every time I search for Haunt Weekly. Yeah, me too. Like, who the fuck is this? I don't know. They got our podcast. Cool. Mm -hmm. Whatever, right? And do take, pay special attention to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash hauntweekly. Once the season is over and we are able to, we're planning on doing some live recordings. That's where the announcements will be about those. So, yeah. Busy, busy times. Mm-hmm. Well, and we'll get into the specific busyness in just a minute. But first thing is first, we, every week we ask a question of the week. And last week's question of the week was, what is your favorite marketing trick? Mm-hmm. And we got some decent response here. I, yeah. I, I'm actually kind of excited to talk about a few of these. Sam Farrell said he sends characters to high traffic areas at the local college. Um, that is a great idea. Yeah. Do make sure you are either in public space, mm-hmm. like most universities have right. public space. I mean, like roads and sidewalks that run through it. So make sure you're either in a public space or that you have the university permission. Yes. And, yeah, that can be a great way to do it. Uh, Kevin Hopkins said, geofence marketing around high schools and colleges. i got to admit I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the geofence marketing around high schools because, A, it's targeting minors, and that raises actual legal questions, mm-hmm. oddly enough. Um, but also, it's like it's high school. It's a school. It's meant to be a place for learning and not being able to study. I mean, then again, I grew up going to high school in the 90s. And I remember the absolute shit fit that was thrown when Coca-Cola put vending machines in the high school. Mm-hmm. That, so I remember that. Um, now, there was a reply asking for more information on geofence marketing. If that's something there's interest in doing, I will, will happily do an episode on it, maybe a little bit, maybe after season. Because um, I can definitely opine on that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I, like I said, my degree is in advertising. So this is something I know a little bit about. It's also a very, very broad term that, like nearly every marketing term, both means everything and nothing all at once. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it is a term worth talking about. Um, and it is a concept worth talking about, especially since we are such a hyper-local industry. So if there's interest in that, let us know at all the places I mentioned before, all the Haunt Weekly, you- Facebook and YouTubes and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Okay, Keone Hutton says, Home Haunters that uses yard signs. Yeah. Um, I think that would be, uh, yard signs in our yard, mm-hmm. I don't think would have a lot of impact because we live on a court. Yeah, but we do put up our banner. Yeah, we do like put up we, our banner. We put up the banner whenever the haunts open so that people know that we're coming. And, and we, we do that about a week before we actually open. Yeah, and we have a special uh, collection of snipe signs, those yard, yard signs or whatever you want to call yeah. them. Uh, that we put out the days we are open. Right. They and give, A, let people know we're open, and B, provide directions in case you're not familiar with the neighborhood. Yeah. Which a lot of people aren't. Right. We get people from all over, hither and yon, so it, it mm-hmm. makes sense to give a little extra guidance mm-hmm. so people are sure and confident they're going the right way. And finally, Robert Moore, 
uh, said, have a John Wayne, he's from Chicago area apparently, so have a John Wayne Gacy room for free public controversy and public attention. I, you know, controversy can bring, sell tickets, but also I worry and I do not like the idea of using serial killers or or criminals in general that have living victims. Right. Which John Wayne Gacy absolutely does. Yeah, yeah. There are some some ethical questions. Yeah. And you know, and I get it. Controversy sells, or at least it gets attention. I don't know if it actually sells tickets, to be honest with you. Right. Um, I, I really and truly don't know that, and that'd be something I, I would be interested in seeing a study on. Yeah, there is a haunt that we will not go to <laughs> yeah. if if we we're in that area because of the controversy that they... Um, Repeatedly have stoked. Yes. We'll just say that, and if you don't know the name of the haunt, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out with like three Google searches. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> sure they'll be in the news at some point. I'm sure I'll be year. talking about them on the podcast before yeah. sound season's over. It's inevitable. I mean, obligatory mention. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, I get it. I mean, I would be very interested in seeing that actually studied, because one of the things you learn in advertising class is that type of controversy does get a lot of attention, but it doesn't necessarily sell product. Right. Um. It, but there are there are exceptions to the rules. For example, controversial movies mm-hmm. tend to do well. Yeah. Um. Especially if they can still secure a wide release. So it might work for haunts. It might work for entertainment. I don't know. I think there's more study for me is needed here is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And this week's question of the week ties directly into our topic this week, which is... What advice would you give new haunters? Yes, indeed. Uh, this is that time of year. Mm-hmm. Haunts are opening up. Haunts have either... Um, Open up last weekend or this weekend, so that means a lot of new haunt actors, in particular, are coming on board. What would you tell them? We'll go through our picks in just a few minutes, but in the meantime, we want to hear yours. Facebook.com slash Haunt Weekly, Twitter.com slash Haunt Weekly, the YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly, everywhere. We read your comments and we compile. Yes. We compile and we compost. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but no, we do compile. All right, so what have we done on our haunt this week? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. The so, list is short, but very, very long in terms of time and work. Yeah. How's that? Good. Yeah, right. we've put in a good 15, 20 hours this weekend. And it's not over. We still have one more day. Yeah. So. So we cleaned out our actor area. Um, and if you, yeah, go ahead. There, there was debris and things still there from Ida that we just had cleaned out and, you know, it it was weird because one day I rounded the corner and there were weeds that were really tall. About that ten feet tall, legitimately tall on the roof line of the yeah, house. Yeah, that weren't there, you know, a month ago. Yeah, and, and basically what happened is uh, just a recap. We had Hurricane Ida right around this time of year last year. Yeah, and it was a bad storm. And the main thing it did impact to impact us was it a our neighbor's roof blew off and damaged some of our vinyl siding, which has now been. Ad hoc repaired for the moment. Yeah. Um, Because even though damage did not appear bad initially, apparently it was worse than I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it was just a pop it back in place situation and call it a day. And it held for a while, but it's not holding. But we had to do some repair work on that too this weekend, not hot related. Mm -hmm. Um, But basically, we had the tree in the backyard that cracked and much of it was about to collapse right on the haunt itself. Yeah. So we urgently got a tree guy out there. Came, removed all of the tree. We at least since it's on the neighbor's property, we can only cut and deal with what's overhang mm-hmm. on ours. So they did everything they legally could, good yeah. on them. And it's much much safer now. But with all that going on, the other debris we cleaned up, we did not actually junk his debris. We did not get it out of the way completely. Right. And combine that with the fact that Ida destroyed what was left of the cover of the actor's area. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And things got bad. And we, out of sight, out of mind, we don't go into the backyard much outside of this time of year. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. And so it's had about a year of growth and we got rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is a video of it. Oh, no. Bernie Baxter, uh, facebook.com slash Bernie Baxter haunt, H-A-U-N-T. Um, if you want to check it out, I may post, reshare it to haunt weekly too. Um, but yeah, there's a short video showing the progress there. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we also began the clean out of the haunt itself. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and, and 
the first step to that was actually cleaning out the, the, the path to the shed. Right. Once again, dealing with Sorry. overgrowth and cleaning out the shed itself. Right, which meant getting all of the things that are part of the yard display moved into the queue line since it's a covered structure. Yeah, it'll and keep fairly them safe. Yeah, these are outdoor items in watertight containers. They can be in a covered space for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, and they may find a more semi permanent home there. We're trying to figure out how we're going to play this long term because uh, we want to make the shed primarily for things that need to be protected from the weather completely. Yeah. Yeah, like the tools, because we have we have some large tools that are inside the haunt normally, and they're going to need a, a home. They're going to need a home for at least the last half of October. Yeah. And so, yeah, we'll move them in there, and basically we had to clear out, clear a path to the shed, because like I said, the overgrowth had also mm-hmm. impacted that, and then clear out enough of the shed so that when we start doing the haunt cleanup proper, mm-hmm. which we did start this weekend too, but once we really get into that... We have a place for all this stuff to go because, it yeah, we're tight on storage space right now. And this yeah. was necessary and very hard work, very backbreaking. Generated at least five trash cans worth of trash. Yeah. yeah. In fact, we're probably going to pick up another damn trash can today. Well, so we're looking at renting a, a yeah. small dumpster yeah. for five days. Yeah, and that's um, the other thing. And then we would do that next weekend. Yeah. Or like Thursday through Monday. The yeah. next weekend, I think, would be our goal. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, we've begun to clean out the haunt itself. It's going fairly smoothly. Mm-hmm. The next two weekends are going to be primarily focused on the yard display, unless we do get the dumpster, at which point some of that time will go. Yeah. To, um, yeah, well, we can only work on the yard display so much of the night. Yeah. You know. Yeah, um, I mean, there comes a point in which we do have to stop. Until we put all the lights out. Yeah. <laughs> So, and the lights are typically the last thing to go yeah. off for a variety of reasons. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to take care of that. It's been a, it's been a very, very physically demanding weekend. And, yes. you know, we were both worried that because of the long break we've had that we're not physically mm-hmm. where we were and that doing this kind of work would be difficult. And it's still proved difficult. Don't get it wrong. But definitely we did it more and better than I was worried. How's that? Yeah. That that makes sense. Um, yeah. So our goal right now is to finish clean out, finish throwing out everything needs to be thrown out, both in the haunt and in the backyard, possibly using a dumpster, still debating that one, and then focusing on building the yard display. Then all of October will be cleaning out, reconfiguring the haunt, and the stuff we have to do for it. We also, uh, I forgot to mention, this wasn't in the notes, we ordered flyers. Mm-hmm. Flyers will be here by the end of the month. Yeah. They look great, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I only slightly tweaked them. I, I know when we talked about the marketing, we were going to hype up the return more. Mm-hmm. But looking at the flyer, um, the flyers we had in previous and wanting to keep a more consistent tone and more consistent style, it was a little difficult. But we we do have some hype on it. So I'm excited about getting them, and they'll be here, like I said, they're supposed to be here September 28th. This site routinely beats its estimations. Yeah. So I'm expecting it closer to the 24th or 26th, somewhere in that range, which is plenty of time, because we're without a spirit nearby, there really isn't any rush. No, we just need to remind the hyper-local people that we're coming back and that we're still here yeah and we're already making a list of places we're going to hit and deliver flyers to so we've got a lot of work in that space but they'll be here in about a week and a half probably knowing the averages of this company Mm -hmm. um so that takes us to the next thing we're working on planning haunt visits this year Mm -hmm. we have decided on the gulf coast trip i-10 east from here it'll have us hitting five haunts starting at terror on the coast and ending in with haunts in mobile Mm mm-hmm um, and the reasons are threefold. One, it's fewer nights away. Right. This is a one night in a hotel situation as opposed to what would definitely be a two night stay any other way we went. Yeah. And also, it keeps us close enough to home that if there's something urgent going on, we can get back. We can abort the trip and get back super quick. We're never going to be further than about two hours away. Yeah. So, I mean, it feels like... We just need it to closer this year. Yeah. This is our first year back in a few years and doing the haunt visits. And 
it's taking on a lot uh, for people and for people that really, like I said, we haven't done haunt visits in three years. We haven't been open in four. Mm-hmm. Or I haven't been open in three, I haven't done haunt visits. And we skipped two, two years of haunt visits and skipped three years of being open. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. Um, and the problem with that is we're out of practice on both. Right. So and some low-hanging fruit's good. Yeah. And, you know, it does still add four new-to-us haunts. Yep. One that we haven't seen in a long time. And supposedly is functionally new to us because they've supposedly made some huge changes between when we saw them. We saw them on their opening years, and now yeah. they're more... Um, my understanding is they're more mature of a haunt in mm-hmm. terms of, like, you know... Not in terms of, like, content. I mean, like, they, they're they as haunters they've matured. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, that's going to happen any time. Yeah, and exactly. But... Yeah, the other thing, not only are we getting our haunt ready, but we're also helping Ellie with her yarn store, which is hoping to open early mid- November. Yeah, early to mid-November. I'm, I think mid-November is a much more reasonable target, um, but we'll see what happens. She, I, I agree she should beat Black Friday and Thanksgiving oh, yeah. break, and I believe she can, because mm-hmm. she's an a yarn store, not a haunt. Um <laughs> So, but yeah, so I think she can do that, and I think she should do that. But I think pushing it toward mid-November makes a lot of sense with everything else going on. And just the nature of what she's trying to do and what she needs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, between Ellie's Yarn Store, our haunt, this podcast, our day jobs. Yeah. There's enough balls in the air right now that, yeah, we just we're not comfortable taking on a lengthy haunt trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the plan, going up and down the Gulf Coast between here and Mobile, hitting a few, a lot of new haunts. T- in total, if we follow the haunt schedule we have now, we will hit 10 haunted attractions uh, this year. That is a low number for us. Um, we hit 11 when we did the Atlanta trip on by ourselves. Right. And, you know, we hit six in Chicago with things of the Lost Souls yeah. bus tour. And we hit, I think, seven or eight in Houston. Mm-hmm. alone not counting the local ones we did yeah so yeah this is a low number for us but also a we are going to see a fair amount of new haunts we're not going to have to go very far and in a weird way because of covid and everything all the haunts are going to be new to us yeah <laughs> even like the new orleans stock and trade ones like what's the mortuary you doing this year what's new orleans nightmare doing this year i don't fucking know no I've seen the inside of Rise recently, and I know some of the stuff they were planning. Mm-hmm. I have no idea how much of it came together. Yeah. Because so, I know how those haunt plans go. Yeah. They're well, very, and we didn't go through a linear path through no, it no. either. So exactly. No, we were doing a behind-the-scenes yeah. tour. And we know 13th Gates made a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. So I'm very, very interested in seeing what all has changed. So every haunt is a new-to-us haunt this year. Yeah. And, you know, it leaves us time that if we find ourselves with a few extra hours... We can make spontaneous haunt visits. Yeah, and we usually do. And Because here's the thing. There's always a haunt you don't learn about <laughs> until you're in the weeds. Yeah. Like, one of the reasons we hit 11 in Atlanta was Freaks of Fear. Mm-hmm. We legit had no idea that a haunt was there and that it was close to us until we were visiting a neighboring haunt and saw an ad for it. And they, they recommended us go. Yeah, that's right. They told us about it, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we checked for you. No, we, we have never heard of them. We researched and Googled feverishly and did not hear of them. No. Please explain it to us. And then they explained it to us, and then we looked it up, and then we still nearly didn't find the fucking place. No. But anyways, so yeah, my thing is, it's going to be a short trip, but that's good. I think that's a good thing. And that puts us where we're moving on. <laughs> yes, the actual topic. I know, tw- only 18 minutes, and shut up. <laughs> But, yeah, basically haunts are opening their doors. A lot of haunts opened this weekend. Mm -hmm. Some are opening next, and some are opening in the beginning of October. But what that means is there's going to be a new crop of haunters that are just starting out. They've got their first acting gig. Yeah. Well, and especially after two years of being closed or slimmed down on the staff and actors Mm -hmm. because of COVID, yeah. You know, there's going to be a lot of new people getting in there. Yeah, there's there's going to be a, a bigger glut than usual of newbies this mm-hmm. year, I, I, I predict. Like you said, because COVID, newbies weren't exactly being picked up by Hans. No. They were trying to ensure slots to their core staff and to the you know, veterans, so to speak. But now we got a lot of newbies coming in. Uh, so we wanted to take a moment and talk to them. Uh mm-hmm. You know, and, and those mentoring them, too, I guess. Now, we did kind of touch on the subject in episode 282, but that one was targeted at haunt owners. 
mm -hmm. and haunt builders more than actors. Here we're talking to actors and the true newbies that have just been recruited for the first job. Yeah. And are excited and the shit we wish we knew when we signed up for that Boy Scout haunt. How many years ago? 20 years ago now? Yeah, something like that. And when we were those idiots, yeah. we were those kids. We were. Two decades ago. Jeez, Murphy World. Mm -hmm. All right, so tip one, piece of advice one, whatever you want to call it, protect your body. Mm -hmm. This is rule one through ten million and change. Safety, safety, safety. Yeah, safety is paramount. You might have heard us beat on this drum a lot. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we've mentioned safety enough in most recent. Yeah, I mean, like the early ones. It's safety, safety, safety. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we've gotten into more niche topics, I think, as part of our exactly. thing. But yeah, your safety is paramount. If you feel something you're being asked to do is unsafe, speak up. Mm -hmm. Say something. Don't do it. Don't put yourself in a situation you are not comfortable with, that you do not feel is safe. You have the right to say no. Oh, what? The haunt fires you? Mm -hmm. Because you won't do this unsafe thing? I assure you there are other haunts. Yeah. You can find another haunt act, or you can just take your ball and go home and build your own haunt next year. Yeah, exactly. But there are definitely other haunts because just as places are struggling to find enough people to work them, haunts are, are part of that industry too that are yeah. going to struggle to find I people. will say this. Um, every I've been following the haunts locally yeah. on their uh, drive for actors, and, mm -hmm. and pretty much in every case – they're done with auditions, but they're still posting, hey, we can still hire you yeah. type things. So yeah. if you, and that's one of the things, if you are interested in haunting, but you didn't do the auditions, reach out to the haunts. You may not be able to get a, like a, a, a speaking role, a premiere, per se, yeah. a premiere role or anything like that. But I guarantee you, they'll have something you can do. Yeah. Almost a hundred percent certain they'll have something you can do. So if you, if you're in that boat, that's what you do. Yeah. And one of the things I want to point out here is, not only is it you feel you're being asked to do something unsafe. Mm -hmm. So going to that, that's not only being within customer reach because some customers will strike, but it's also things like being put into positions and places where if there's a fire or an emergency, you can't get out of quickly. Yeah, we've seen haunts that have done very, very dumb things like put people in actual cages yeah. that they can't quick release. Yeah, that is so, so beyond stupid. Yeah, so think of those things too. Like think of the worst case scenarios, and can I get out of this in a few seconds? And one other thing to, to think about is you're going to be over. You're going to be very eager. I yep. get it. Yeah, respect the energy. Yes. Just remember that whatever you're going to do, you have to be able to do hundreds of times per night for twelve to thirty nights a season, depending on how long your season is, mm -hmm. and you have to do it safely. And without getting too tired. Yeah. Without exhaustion. So basically, focus on finding something that you can do that you can repeat thousands of times without injury to yourself or the risk of injury. Right. And this is short-term or long-term yeah. injury. Because, you know. You don't want to, you don't, you definitely don't want to do anything that permanent or semi-permanent to your body here. Yeah. But you also don't want to do anything that causes you to miss a few nights because, you know, we'll get right. into like your voice being gone in a little bit. We're getting into that mm -hmm. in a little bit. But yeah, protect your body. Don't put yourself in unsafe situations. Do not do things that are not infinitely repeatable. And all of this goes for after hours and other events with the haunt group, your haunt team. Because if you're not comfortable going with or someone there is making you uncomfortable, especially if you're a minor, mm -hmm. speak the fuck up. Say something. It, it yeah, is no matter who you are. Yeah, no matter who you are. You just say but, something. But apparently we've been having a run of very bad <sighs> no uh, people with minors and haunts. And I just wanted to kind of get that one in in particular yeah. because of that. Next item up for bid. All right, protect your voice. Yes. I wanted to call this out specifically. I actually damaged my voice one year, so I was making a weird noise. Um, so if you feel hoarse after haunting, learn how to scream properly. Look up the Zen of Screaming on YouTube. Um, this is something that singers and uh, like metal bands, yeah, and death things, metal in particular, yeah, um, they use this technique because whenever I was learning or getting a few. Vocal lessons. Vocal lessons yeah. from a local person that's not a vocal coach, but a friend. Um, they recommended this, and it 
really helped me with the haunt and being able to project because I'm not a loud person normally. No. Huh. Um, so it, it's a very good. And it teaches you to project yeah. and project safely in a way that exactly. you, your vocal cords. From the diaphragm. And then, you know, then basically, like one of the things they talk about is you basically you shove a pencil sideways in your mouth. So uh-huh. You're biting down on it and you hold it as far back as you can. And you try to make sure the sounds you make come above the pencil, not under it. Mm hmm. Because that means you're doing it right and you're not risking damaging your vocal cords. You only got one larynx, guys. Mm-hmm. Guys and gals, you, you need to be careful with it. Back to that uh, one body. <laughs> yeah, one part of one body. And, and yeah, if you end up hurting your voice, you can't act every night. Right. And you may do permanent or semi-permanent damage. It's actually very easy to do. So if you're feeling hoarse, if you're leaving the haunt and going, ah, you know, my mm-hmm. throat, take a minute, look up this stuff. Maybe see about a vocal coach, even locally. Yeah. Because they can help you with this, too. Find, you know, the resources to teach you how to do this properly. You will save your voice so much work, and you'll be able to project better. Yeah. It's a win-win. And if you are feeling that your voice is tired at the end of the night, many, many people recommend using cough drops throughout the night. Yes. And mints also, because yeah. mints will make your, so your breath... Bet. Oh, oh, so yeah. yeah. It almost makes breath minty fresh for when you're yelling at people. Yeah, I do love it when actors are getting in close and personal and have breath mints. It's always yeah. such a lovely thing. Because mm-hmm. you know, there, than there the is a time we do not need the olfactory experience in a haunt. Yeah, um, I'm perfect. So yeah, cough drops and mints are a great way to keep going. Mm-hmm. Uh, drink lots of water too, though. Yes, water will also help your throat. But yeah, basically, if you're horse. Look up these guys. Number next item up for bid. Number three, nail your role. Mm-hmm. This is very very important. A lot of actors don't understand right out of the gate. Learn what your specific role is. If you're behind a bullshit drop panel, dude, been there, sucks. But what you got to do is you've got to do that role with more enthusiasm and more skill than anyone else. Take the time, learn it, study it, figure out how you can make it better. Because mm-hmm. um, promotions and haunts are very often wartime promotions. Oh, so and so couldn't make it today. Who do we have that can fill this fairly important role? They're immediately going to look at the people that are behind drop panels and in bullpen roles and promote them and pluck them out of it, or or pluck someone else into that role. But then that role's empty. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. There's that's how you move up. Yeah. Is inevitably people can't make it for one reason or another, um, and that's how you move up in a haunt a lot of the times. But the only way you're going to do it is if you nail the task you're given. Yeah. Whatever that task is. So study it. Learn it. If it's a drop panel, master that timing. Master the release. Yeah. Really nail it. Yeah. And not only that, but you also need to learn your character. Yeah. Like, if if you're not given a character backstory, but you're given, you know, how it's supposed to look and that sort of thing... Make up a story for that character. It will make the character better. Basically, um, any instructions you get directly from the people who are higher up than you in the haunt, follow those instructions to the letter. Yes. Listen to them and follow them. Any areas they don't give you instructions, understand what you're allowed to improvise and what you're allowed to do. Maybe Are you allowed to create a character? I, I don't know why anyone wouldn't allow that in that situation. Well, I mean, so if I'm behind a drop panel, I mean, I can see that there's not a lot of reason to create a character behind that, but it's very different to say, oh, they stuck me behind a drop panel, than, oh, I'm this dark creature behind this drop panel. I was put here because I you know, pissed off the owners or whatever, and I'm really trying to get out and take it out on the customers. You know, just a little bit of backstory even will help you project the character to the crowd. Yeah. The main mistake we're trying to tell people to avoid is that a lot of actors, especially newbies, will often try to go into business for themselves. Yeah, don't do that. and, And try to do things and do scares that were not part of their job description. Yeah. Don't do that without the permission the people running the haunt. Yeah. A lot of haunts are very loose and will allow you to play with that. Fine. That is a choice. That is a style and it can be very good. Mm-hmm. But a lot of haunts are also very strict about it and refuse to allow you. If so, good. That's a choice. That's a style too. It can be very good. Basically, listen to those that are um, that are 
basically training you and trying to help you become a better haunter. Mm-hmm. And that brings us to number four. Uh, make friends with those near you. Um, we do not buy into the whole haunt family BS that a lot of haunts give from the top down. Yeah. If, 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 if your haunt owner is trying to give you this long speech about how we're a haunt family, mm-hmm. and they're doing that, especially if they're doing that in lieu of payment coming up, <laughs> spoiler yeah. alert, don't well, listen to them, kids. Yeah, or to manipulate you into like, doing, doing more unsafe. than yeah. what you are, are able to. Or to come on a night you're not able to. We've yeah. seen that, that used to bully people and to not go into their father's funeral. Yeah. And that is horrible. Yeah. The, yeah. But the haunt family thing is real. And it can be a very positive thing. And the best way to do that is to make friends and communicate and work with those immediately around you. Yeah. Um, basically don't try to chum up with the boss or the actor manager or something like that. They're probably a very busy yeah, and don't have time to chum it up. Um, but also, yeah, you want to be in a team that's happy and healthy and communicative and working together well and has fun doing it. Mm-hmm. So make friends with your team, the people around you, coordinate with them, discuss strategy, bond a bit. And figure out how you can improve not just what you're doing, but the whole zone through working together. Yeah, and and be cl- sure to make friends with and get close to your zone manager. Yeah. Because the zone manager is the one that's looking, um, watching your performance every night, and they will take it higher up the chain. Yeah. yeah. You know, basically, and some and we've seen this where like new haunters will immediately try to buddy up with the owner. Yeah. Buddy or buddy up with the higher up manager, something like that. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Focus on your team. Focus on your shit, basically. So this is an extension of that one, you know, that previous mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah, the haunt family is real, but it should be something you forge on your own, not something that is forced upon you by the haunt. Exactly. There's, that's the difference. There's a difference. We're trying to get you to forge your own haunt family rather than having it shoved on you. Right. All right, next up. Right. Don't work for free unless it's a charity or a home haunt. Yeah. If it's a business, don't work for free. Exactly. Easy. (laughs) Far too many haunters that are businesses, they're for profit, are looking for volunteer actors. Don't fall for it. They are there to make money. They're there to make money off of you. Um, And it's the law. And you deserve to be paid for your time and your effort. Now, obviously, there are exceptions. Charity haunts. Yeah. You can donate time. However, if you do donate your time, make sure you get a slip for that time spent. Yeah. Because a lot of places, a lot of workplaces will give you credit and time off or give you bonuses Mm -hmm. for doing a certain amount of volunteer work. This can be an excellent opportunity to earn those. Yeah. Like, I know Ellie's job, for example, will give an extra day of vacation if you do X number of hours of volunteer work per year. Well, they they also will pay yeah. the charity her salary yeah, for, that for the hours that she works. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a very good system. But if you don't get the fucking slips, if you don't get any kind of receipts for that, yeah. it's kind of useless. Yeah, well, and also for tax purposes, mm-hmm. tax will ask you, have you donated time? Yeah. I noticed that on the form last year that they added, you know, time as a valuable commodity because it is. Yeah. I agree. So basically, if you're working for a charity haunt, get the fucking receipts. Yeah. Uh, and if it's a business, if it's a for-profit haunt, you should be getting a paycheck. Yep. <laughs> no, I get it. It's not enough to make a difference. It's not going to be your J- full-time J-O-B. <laughs> no. It just won't be. Um, but here's the thing. Even if you don't really care about the pay, mm-hmm. any haunt that is not a pro-haunt that's for-profit, that is not paying their actors, has other problems. I guarantee it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, seriously, just refuse to work for a business for free. Um, avoid those bigger problems, even if you don't care about the money. And don't buy into any top-down, forced-on-you haunt family life. Build your own haunt family. Don't have it forced on you by as an edict. Yeah. From on high! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, you got that in there twice. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, number six. I really wish I had known this one sooner. Mm-hmm. Wear comfortable footwear. Um, I don't care what your costume is. I don't care if you are a zombie, an executioner, or what. Wear comfortable footwear. Comfy sneakers or good boots. Emphasis mm-hmm. on good boots. 
will make the world of difference. It's a, such a simple thing, but it can save you so much pain. Once again, this is going back to protecting your body, but protecting a very specific part of your body. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I think this deserves a special mention is because in our modern society, for most people, it is very rare to be on your feet for this many hours at a time, mm-hmm. especially being this physically active. There's very few occupations that require that of you. And so if you are like not that type of person, you may not be prepared for the foot pain that comes with three to six hours standing and stomping and running around. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it is. And so, yeah, dress accordingly. And if someone complains that your shoes don't fit your costume, fuck them. Mm. No. This goes back to safety I, first. The only thing that I could see, like, there are a few rare occasions. Mm-hmm. Like, seeing a clown in sneakers, if it's a traditional, mm-hmm. like, red nose, and then you expect to see the big red shoes. Well, the other thing you can do, though, is you might be able to get slip-on covers for comfortable shoes. Exactly. You can dress up comfortable shoes. You can distress comfortable new shoes. And the thing is, is that you need to wear shoes that aren't only comfortable, that you don't mind getting trashed. Because... Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's a very important thing. Either shoes that you know can take it. Once again, going yeah. back to the good boots. Yeah. My, my 5'11 tactical boots can take it. I'm pretty sure they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. my advice, if you don't have shoes already that fit this bill, head to a sketcher store. No. Relatively inexpensive shoes, comfortable, and will probably last you one haunt season, and that'll be it. Yeah, no, I I used to make the mistake of buying new shoes mm-hmm. at the end of September. Yeah. And then haunt work would start, and typically I only have one pair of shoes. Yeah. Like, for the longest time, that's all I had. Yeah. Um. So I would wear them to work in the haunt, and the first night, sure enough, the toe of the boot has gotten scratched off, and it... Yeah. It's just aggravating. Yeah, buy shoes you're comfortable throwing away then haunt season, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, and that's why I think Skechers are probably pretty good. Because, yeah, they're they're relatively inexpensive. They're very comfortable. Once you find the ones that are comfortable to you. And if they get <laughs> And if they get scratched or scuffed or torn or whatever, eh, no big loss. Moving on. Okay. Number seven. Is Proactively for, ask for suggestions. Yeah. This is a good one. Because don't expect your bosses or your zone managers or those people will just come out and tell you what to improve. Mm-hmm. Ask. And it may be you're doing a good enough job that they don't feel the need to step in and say, right. that's so good. Good work. Good work. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know, you, you probably want to improve. You probably want to get better scares. You put more, more, more. It's an addiction, right? Yeah. We're feeding the fever here. Yeah. Um, the best way to get that advice is ask. Um, don't be annoying about it. Don't be constantly asking how things were. Um, but but do approach them. Show an interest in improving your character, improving your haunting uh, mm-hmm. with them. And take those suggestions on board and use them. Yeah. And I would be cautious of taking advice from actors around you. Yeah. Like, if they're not the the zone manager or they haven't been there for a lot of years, um, just be careful with that. Yeah, stick... Yeah. The, the thing is, and this is something a lot of people don't realize about haunting, is it's very easy for other people, even people who aren't super experienced, mm-hmm. to look at the work you're doing and say, oh, that would work better if X, Y, Z, but it's hard to see that yourself. Right. But you also have to be careful because, like you said, that advice from relatively new haunters could be unsafe. It could yeah. be. Yeah. Well, and so I'm, I'm thinking of two instances in our haunt. So one is people hate working next to me. Like, they don't, but, I'm, but I give them a lot of, like, okay, you can do this instead of that, like, throughout the night. So it's... Um, Especially opening night. By the second night, we're fine. But the first night, it's just, no, don't say that. Try this instead. Yeah. Um, but I know that there was a shock. We we had set up a shock room at one point, and my brother was being shocked. You know, quote, unquote, shocked. Mm-hmm. And someone told him not to flail so much because if you're being shocked, your body goes rigid. Yeah, tenses up. He has back issues. Yeah. So he tried to make it look more realistic 
without the flailing, which A, took away from the distract, yeah. and B, put him in pain. Yeah. And and that's one of the things. I realized in that case, yes, he, the person was right. It is much more realistic to go rigid and still. Yeah. But A, the flailing movements, the big movements are what are drawing people's eye away. Exactly. And... And not many people know that instinctively. No, not a lot of people know that. You're going to get maybe like one or two percent of yeah, people. Yeah, the electrician comes through halfway through the yeah. night and goes, Hey, he actually knew what it looks like to get shocked. Well, yeah, exactly. But everybody else is not going to get that. <laughs> or even if they do get it, it's not going to be so, um, it's not going to take them out of the kayfabe of the haunt. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, proactively ask for suggestions from people who have been around longer than you and your actors slash mm-hmm. managers. Yeah. Ask for help. Um, number eight. Oh, take your goddamn breaks, people. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is so annoying, and I see this in haunts. Uh, basically, every new haunter wants to be the cool, tough person that I can just go all night long. I, I Or they're really young and full of energy, and they really can, but it's not good for you in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. If you're offered breaks, take them. Please. Even if you don't feel like you don't need them. Even if you're thinking to yourself, I'm not tired. I can do this all night long. I'm great. Mm-hmm. No, no. You do need the breaks. Mm-hmm. Go. Get some water. Get a little food into you. Sit down. Take a load off. I don't know the number of times I've been told I took a break when I didn't feel like I needed one. Uh-huh. And then I sat down and realized I needed a break. Well, and not only that, but you've got to realize that you're doing this night after night after night. So if you don't take your breaks on the first night, by the second night, you're going to need extra breaks. And by the end of season, especially if you're doing Hell Week, yeah, your body is going to be wrecked. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really against the idea of Hell Week, just yeah. because I know how hard it is on the actors. Yeah, especially actors that have full time jobs outside of haunting. Yeah. Um, it, it is rough. And yeah, so basically, take your breaks when you're offered them. A good haunt will find ways to get you break times, either rotate you in and out, or just have that scene be dead for a moment or two. Mm-hmm. Take those breaks, especially if you're doing a night that's longer than like three or four hours in haunting. Yeah. Please take your breaks. Yeah. Just your body will thank you. Trust me. And And for the record, I know it's called Hell Week for a reason. It's not called Fluffy Pillow Week or something. <laughs> so I'm renaming Hell Week Fluffy Pillow Week. <laughs> That's what everybody needs at the end of it. This, it's the Spanish Inquisition. They bring out the comfy chair. Exactly. <laughs> I know it's called Hell Week for a reason, but it yeah. shouldn't be hell because it's hell on but the actors. But, but the, like you said, those breaks are super important to make sure you maintain your intensity, maintain everything, not just that night, but the entire season. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to sacrifice breaks, sacrifice it on the last night. Sacrifice it Halloween night, you know, because yeah. you'll have all day the next day to recover, probably. Because mm-hmm. you were a smart person and took the next day off from your regular job, right? I did. Because <laughs> if you didn't... Um, Tip uh, X, a new tip. Yeah. Right now, you should be putting in your time <laughs> for the, off. For the, for, la- the give you one full day of rest after haunt yeah. season ends, whenever yeah. your last night is. Yeah, because and, Halloween is on a work day. Yeah. Oh, it's on a, um, yeah. On Monday, yeah. On Monday. It's just a work day for a lot of people. Yeah. So if, you know, you haven't done that, um, that's it. Tip X. We're just putting that <laughs> yeah. in three bonus tip. Yeah. All right, but number nine. All right. Try to participate in after-haunt activities. Realize you may not be able to, like some of our actors aren't able to because they have school or they have to be up at a job the next morning. Or some are actually going to their jobs. Yeah, I know. Um, Which I think these mad bastards. (laughs) Yeah, or they, you know get rides from people and the people have to be yeah in bed at a certain time. So But if you are able to. Yeah. And if you feel comfortable doing so, don't forget we gotta keep that in there. Uh-huh. Uh, if you feel comfortable doing so, I cannot encourage you enough to participate in whatever post haunt gathering the haunt is doing. Mm-hmm. Um it is almost be I mean most haunts there's a tradition of finding an all night diner. Mm-hmm. Or because and it's typically it's smaller in the, haunts, smaller haunts in particular, yeah. But finding some because one of the challenges of, is if haunts have people under twenty one, you can't go to a bar necessarily. Yeah, typically under twenty one is not allowed in a bar. 
Um, but you can go to a Denny's or a Waffle House or a IHOP or something like that. Huddle House. I'm just like iced tea naming things now. Yeah. Um, but you can go to an all night diner and, and get some, get some post haunt breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. And the main thing is you sit there and talk about the night. Yeah. And I do know that some of the larger haunts have this kind of event afterwards that's catered. Yeah. So. But typically after, those are just after season, not after each night. Okay. I know some haunts will have after events that are catered or after parties, but they're typically after season. But if, if a large haunt does do this every night, yes, hell yes, you, you, you do this. Yeah. You participate in this. And you sit there and you, A, make friends, mm -hmm. and B, you discuss, especially with those who were around you, all the, for, it always starts the same way. Yeah. Uh, did you see that one person that came through and they like mm -hmm. did the weird thing and yeah. <laughs> we're all over, they fell on the floor and they got up and then they ran like a chicken and it was great, you know? Yeah. Starts like that. <laughs> yeah, e exactly. But, yeah. I <clears throat> And then it sort of morphs into talking about how everything works and also just getting to know each other as human beings. Right. What do you do outside of haunting? What do you like? You know? Mm -hmm. And it's a very important thing because this is a how you forge a haunt family organically mm -hmm. and naturally. But more to the point, it's also how you really get the maximum enjoyment out of haunting. Yeah. Everybody loves scaring people. But believe me, this is always, like, my favorite memories of haunting are almost always the after stuff. Sometimes it's the, hey, we're in the actor area here. We're all passing around beers and have our catering here and hanging out and talking. That's been done a lot. Mm -hmm. Or we go to a restaurant or bar or whatever. Cause we have all yeah. age appropriate for a bar, typically. Yeah, we used to go to IOP when mm -hmm. we had younger people mm -hmm. and... And whenever we didn't have, you know, Ellie to provide food throughout the night. Yeah. My dad would provide great brisket. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. But that would be gone by before the haunt opened. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. And you've just spent, in our case, it's usually three and a half hours or so of mm. intense exercise, intense movement. Yeah, you're gonna need some food. You're gonna need some yeah. liquid. You're gonna need. You need to calm down. And it's such an important part because it's how you're gonna build that haunt family. It's how you're gonna get a lot of the tips and suggestions and ideas mm -hmm. for improving your work. And it's also just a big portion of the fun. Mm -hmm. And I, I I feel kind of bad for haunters. And I understand, like I said, it's a have to situation. There's no judgment here. But it's like haunters that have to go and can't participate in at least a little bit of that yeah. really do miss out. And I feel like they're not getting everything they can get. Yeah. But also, don't be afraid to say, I can't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, if you have other priorities. And, or if you're just not comfortable. Yeah. Just don't don't go in that case. But if you are comfortable and you are able, yeah, do it. Absolutely. 100%. Do it. It makes the haunt experience. It puts the little you know, chef's kiss on the mm -hmm. whole haunt experience. It ends the night with a punctuation. It's great. And plus, you, you get some really good greasy diner food usually out of it. <laughs> what am I going to say? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It, it To me, that has always been one of the more important parts. Because I know when you and I, after a haunt, after we're done with the haunt, and after even after the after party stuff, you and I will sometimes stay up an hour or two. Yeah talking and just discussing what happened and going through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, and a lot of the times whenever we're hanging out with actors before you and I get together, um, we're gathering that information to relate it with each other. Yeah. So we can improve for the second night. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, focus. Yeah, so basically don't hesitate to participate in after haunt events if you were able and if you are comfortable doing so. I highly recommend it. And also make sure that you follow all of their social media. Yeah. Oh, and God, yes. if there is a group, like a social media group just for the actors, follow, become part of that too because they'll have events or they should have events throughout the year that you'll be invited to and you'll be able to be part of and get no. in earlier. Now, I know that a lot of these newbie actors are young. So I have to drop an unfortunate truth here. 
which is that most of these groups exist on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. They and do. I know no cool kids use Facebook these days. I understand that, mm -hmm. but that's just the best place for those groups right now. So, mm -hmm. sorry, <laughs> Facebook is real for haunters, and I don't really know why Facebook is so big for haunters, but it really is. Yeah, it is. At least we're not on MySpace still. <laughs> is MySpace still a thing? I don't know. I, I don't... I don't think it is. I... I have no idea. I have no idea either. But at least we, like, moved off that platform. Oh, thank Maybe God. eventually we'll get to another one. You know, we're going to be the people in the old folks' home. Like, in my days, I had to pick my top eight people on my social media and rearrange them. Okay, with that accent, I did not get any of that. I had I had to pick my top eight people on social media and... Okay, thank you. And rearrange them regularly as people pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to be those weird people in the, in the in the old folks' home talking about that. Mm -hmm. well, on that note, everyone, since we're not the old people yet, well, <laughs> I guess we are now. Um, we're the middle-aged people. <laughs> we're the middle-aged people. But either way, we do need to wrap this up. It's been wonderful, and I hope that if you're a new actor, something in this was helpful. Please, if there anything in this is kept and held on to, protect your body and focus on your personal safety. Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing. If you only get one of these things right, do that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely 110% think that is the focal point. But definitely do take a moment if you've not done so. Check us out of the places we exist. We're at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly for previous episodes galore. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week with... Probably more injuries and more pulled muscles and strains and everything else we're giving ourselves this haunt season. We'll See do something. <laughs> See you then.